Bandai Namco is finally giving Dragon Ball fans what they've been asking for, a spiritual successor to the Budokai Tenkaichi series. The Dragon Ball franchise has seen many games over its expansive history, with the Budokai and Budokai Tenkaichi series being the highlights. I grew up playing the likes of Budokai 3, with many fond memories of heated battles on a couch, yelling special attacks at siblings and friends alike. While Dragon Ball Fighter Z is an incredible fighting game in its own right, it doesn't scratch the same itch as the Budokai Tenkaichi series does. These games were the blueprint for many anime arena fighters we see today, which have been absent from the spotlight since 2007's Budokai Tenkaichi 3, but no longer. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a fantastic throwback to the games I grew up with. The animation and graphics are incredibly clean, looking like they just left it out of the anime. The fights are tense and frantic, warping around enemies and blasting them to bits at ridiculous speed. There are many modes, over 180 fighters, and a ton to dig into. At the same time, the main campaign's difficulty will be a turn off to some, but Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a fan's dream come true. There are a ton of different modes in Sparking Zero. Several campaigns are based on franchise favorite arcs, ranging from the obvious in Goku and Vegeta to some surprises like Frieza and Goku Black. The lengths range in playtime with Goku's being the longest, but each one offers a fun ride throughout some of the most famous fights in the series. The coolest parts about these campaigns though is the Sparking episodes. Each campaign has at least one, with Goku having multiple, where a specific fight will have unique secondary win conditions. For example, if Goku can take out Raditz alone, without Piccolo's help, he avoids that mortal blow that kills him in canon. What spins out instead is a wild story that I won't spoil here, but is a ton of fun. Gohan's is a personal favorite, going into some genuinely cool moments. While starting with the campaign sounds like a good idea, Sparking Zero is hard. So much so that I was getting my teeth kicked in during the very first fight. There isn't a gradual learning curve here. It tosses you right into the deep end and expects you to float. I quickly retreated and went into the comprehensive training mode. There are a ton of different explanations, demos, and opportunities to test out the moves you'll need to win. I can't remember the last time I spent multiple hours working on guard and counter timing, which is genuinely tough to land at points, but here I am. The tutorials don't do the best job of teaching you everything, with some of the more complicated techniques being left to just simple explanations. But when it does click, it feels so satisfying as you head back to the campaign to start making progress. This may be a total turnoff for some, as the difficulty is a mix of unbalanced opponents and an AI that seems to know every move as you make it. The early fight with Great Ape Vegeta stands out as he deals wild damage at an insane rate. The thing is, the Budokai Tenkaichi series has always been like this. It's not a cakewalk, and it's not always fair, but finding the path through a fight is really satisfying. Sure, it may be a lot of running away, powering up, and looking for tiny opportunities to spam your super move, but the ebb and flow of the fights feels like the anime. You'll get clowned, figure out how not to do that, and come back ready to throw down and move to the next level. Would I have liked a more balanced and fair adventure? Sure, but the old school feeling that the new entry manages to capture is something special, resting more on nostalgia. The Dragon Ball games have never been ballast, and honestly, I'm kind of glad Sparking Zero keeps up the tradition. Conversely, the tournaments are a great place to cut teeth and sharpen your skills. With a bunch of different ones focused on different fights throughout the series, including the Cell games and the World Tournament, you choose a character and fight your way to the top. The difficulty curve here is much smoother, allowing for more experimentation across characters to find your main. You can play these offline and online, letting friends go head-to-head -to, -head to see who's the best Z-Warrior. Regular battles are also a blast, more straightforward offline and online fights. Sparking Zero does have local multiplayer, but it's limited to only one stage. I wish we had more offerings for locales to battle through, but given the console limitations, I'm glad we at least have something. A Dragon Ball Arena fighter without local multiplayer just wouldn't have felt right. Bonus battles are another area to fight through. They're custom battles that can have special restrictions or challenges, pushing the player to complete the fight uniquely. They're fun, albeit short, fights that change the flow of gameplay. The coolest part is the ability to craft your own and upload it for other players to play. It gives a good measure of replayability, hopping through challenges to test yourself and see what an exciting story proposition is. The story setups can be pretty funny because of how the dialogue works, as certain words are just swapped in and out to go with the current situation. I laughed making a scenario that frames Frieza as a Z-Warrior and Protector of Earth, Bulma praising him after winning a fight. Online, though, is a beast all on its own. Players can fight across unranked and ranked matches. It is entirely a sweaty, drag-out fight every time, as the unbalanced characters really do shine here. At this point, it feels like a lot of the same strongest characters online, with variations of Vegito, Gogeta, Goku Black, and Great Vegeta being staples. They are stronger and more powerful characters, so going up against them with the likes of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan just feels like an insurmountable challenge. Sure, I get stomped most times, but the few times I've edged out a win have felt fantastic. Ranked introduces a point system with a max of 15 and different characters having varying costs. For example, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan costs 7 points, meaning he can be paired with Super Vegito for 8 points to round out the 15. Ultra Instinct Goku, though, costs 9, limiting options on who else he can be used with. Krillin costs 3 and some of the other characters round out in different point variations as well. 
Bringing in top characters costs more and limits the number of fighters you'll have, while choosing lower cost characters gives you more bodies to throw at the opponent. While the characters are unbalanced, player ability still reigns supreme. The actual matchmaking, on the other hand, is just okay. Searching for a quick match loads you into a room where other players may already be battling. You can find yourself waiting for their fight to finish before you can even go up against the winner. It's an excellent idea in theory, replicating the old school arcade feeling of tossing a quarter down on the cabinet waiting for the next fight. I've actually learned a few things watching others fight. The issues arrives though, is when you don't get that opportunity, as many players just leave after their fight, leaving you sitting in a room by yourself. It's a waste of time and frustrating when this happens back to back. Ranked doesn't have this issue, but not everyone wants to fight through Ranked. I do hope a more classic quick match gets added, as sometimes I want to just hop in for a few games without having to wait. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero does have a few connection issues online. They do let you search by connectivity strength, trying to mitigate it somewhat. I haven't had a lot of issues, but when I do, the whole fight can just slow down for a little bit. The game doesn't have any rollback netcode either, but I haven't really found much input lag. I've had mostly a smooth experience, so the few times haven't stood out too much, but they do exist. The core gameplay of Sparking Zero is a ton of fun. The fights are massive and frenetic, wildly moving around the giant arena to try and get a couple of quick hits in. The combat has a lot of depth, and learning it does take time. It's seemingly simple as first, as pulling off combos or super attacks doesn't require a complicated button combination, but a simple shoulder and face button press. The depth comes in with positioning, counters, revenge counters, differences in attack patterns and type of attacks. There's a lot here to understand. There are accessibility options to help smooth out the experience, allowing some heavy lifting to be taken off of the player. The fights feel like watching battles in the anime, as players warp around and shoot off massive attacks. It's a lot of fun drawing you in with the surface simplicity before diving into the complex mechanics underneath. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero's characters roster is also enormous, with over 180 characters and transformations. Spike Chunsoft covered the full gamut, with characters across the original Dragon Ball, Z, GT, Super, and movies all represented. You'd be hard pressed not to find a handful of your favorite characters to learn in main. There are issues with the overall flow of the game though. The menus are lively and fun at first look, but take time to move through. While it's cute initially, moving through them with the time can get annoying. Sure, the campaign fights are tough, but navigating the menus is cumbersome. With many sparkling episode qualifiers being based on time, if you don't hit that restart button before the match ends, you're left kind of just sitting through menus to be given another attempt. Similarly, if you lose, there's a bunch of unskippable scenes that follow. It's fine when you lose a couple of times, but some of these fights require repeated attempts and waiting through them just isn't fun. A quick menu that pops up with the proceed, restart, or main menu would fix a lot of these issues rather than leaving it behind the padding of the scenes. The character menus are also all over the place. Rather than choosing Goku and then choosing a variation, all of the transformations are just splayed out all over the place. It just elongates an already long page and just doesn't flow well. The 45 second timer for character selection in online fights should be elongated as well, as working through that many characters just needs more time. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a fantastic return for a beloved series. The roster is massive, the action is loud and satisfying with enough modes to keep any fan busy. While not everything is finely tuned or exactly balanced, it retains the heart and energy of the anime and the original games. Some things like the overall flow between fights and menus do need work. It may not be for everyone with the campaign difficulty and lack of overall balance enough to turn some away, but I am having an absolute blast with Sparking Zero. Sparking Zero really is a fan's dream comes true. Thanks for watching.